Hello, I'm Nick Park from Evangelical Alliance Ireland, and this is our weekly message. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. I've had a number of people getting in touch with me about Eurovision, writing about the Irish entry for Eurovision. Uh, obviously, a number of people very upset over the Irish entrant. It's somebody called a Bambi Thug, who uh, some people are upset because she appears to be confused about what gender she is. Uh, other people upset because she is openly satanic uh, and supports uh, satanic rituals and is very antagonistic to Christianity. Well, that's true as well. Um, so how, how, what are we to do about this? I've got people asking, can EAI organize some kind of national day of prayer about it? Or uh, we all need to take a stand that, uh, that, that this is dreadful because it's showing that Ireland's not a, a Christian country. And uh, just want to make some observations on this. W one thing is clear, this particular performer is not one that I think any Christian would want to go and see, to watch on TV, to, to have anything to do with, a complete antithesis to everything that we believe and everything that we stand for. Now, this should not surprise us because the world is sinful. You know, so often as Christians, we get uh, so almost surprised whenever things that are totally of the world are sinful. But if we take seriously what the Bible says, we are living in a sinful world. Jesus said, the world will hate you for my sake. Uh, the, though the world is sinful, and therefore we should not be surprised whenever the sinful world acts in a sinful way. I mean, I see the same thing in the United States. I have friends and every year they, they, they're, they're going on to Facebook and saying how dreadful it is that this uh, th this a particular act was a uh, in the halftime show at the Super Bowl or was at the Grammys or something that was said at the Oscars or or anything else listen when you're talking about sport when you're talking about entertainment when you're talking about the movie industry when you're talking about the music industry it, it is overwhelmingly about the world and the world is sinful and we should not be surprised when a sinful world acts in a sinful way and endorses things that are sinful. Uh, to be honest, I think the whole Eurovision contest has been an absolute mess uh, for many, many years. I mean, it's never been a place for good music, but, but now there's every other cause and nonsense is being pushed through it. And this year, it's on in May. It's running from the 7th to 11th of May. It was bad enough when it just lasted for one night. Now it seems to last for four or five days. But uh, it's taking place in Malmo in, in Sweden. And uh, the fact is, yes, this does show that Ireland is no longer a Christian country. We know that Ireland is in a mess morally and culturally. That should not surprise us. We as Christians are a minority. We are not a majority in this country. And I don't know if we ever have been, if Bible believing Christians has ever been a majority in Ireland. Uh, certainly not for many centuries. I guess maybe if you go back to sometime very close to the time of Patrick, uh, well over a thousand years ago, one and a half thousand years ago, you might be able to find some time when you might have been able to make an argument that Ireland was a Christian country. But for many centuries, we have not been a Christian country. And yes, choosing this act to, uh, to represent Ireland at a, at a song contest does show that Ireland is in a bad place morally. Uh, and again, we knew that already. That's, that's not a surprise to me and should not be a surprise to any Bible believing Christian. Now, we do have to recognize that people of all religions, including Satanists, have rights in a secular society. And in the same way that we think it's great when somebody is in the public realm, somebody like Katie Taylor, for example, who speaks very openly about her Christian faith, we've got to recognize that there are other people are going to explo exploit fame and recognition to promote things that we find horrible to, to promote religious beliefs that we believe to be totally false and harmful rather than people just being allowed to promote the true gospel of Jesus Christ. So yeah, we should be praying for our nation. I'm not going to call a, a 
a day of prayer because of the Eurovision Song Contest, but I urge every Christian to pray every day for Irish society. We are not a Christian nation. We've not been a Christian nation for centuries. We don't act like a Christian nation. We have many moral issues and problems at the heart of our nation. And that's why we as Christians should be praying every day. That's why I believe in 24 pray hour prayer and support, 24 seven prayer going on, because we need to pray for this nation. Yet the fact that such a performer and such a song can represent, be chosen to represent Ireland at an international song contest, even a rubbish international song contest like Eurovision, is a sign of where the nation is. And if that provokes you to play, pray, please do pray. But I do not see this as a make or break moment in Irish history or in Irish Christian history either. We are a minority where we were a minority in this country before Eurovision Song Contest ever came along, we are a minority today. We are going to continue to pray. We're going to continue to serve Jesus. We're going to continue to work for Jesus. And there's going to be expressions of evil in the world about us. And sometimes these things weren't as openly displayed as they are now. But that, if that motivates you to pray more, then that is uh, something positive that can come out of it. So I would encourage you to pray for our nation. Uh, don't get too worked up over a rubbish song contest, but let's continue to pray that the gospel will spread across this nation and that the many wonderful churches and wonderful ministries that are working across this nation will continue to present Jesus to people in ways that are attractive, in ways that are effective and in ways that give glory to God. It might be Friday, but Sunday's coming.